Okay? Listen, Jesus put it this way. I like this. I like this. You're in me. And I'm in you. Oh, glory to God. Amen? You're in me and I'm in you. What a spot. Are you kidding me? What a spot. What a place to be. Wow. Man, when you sin and you will, agree with God that you have sinned and thank Him for His forgiveness and move on. Living up to what you have already attained. I'm not because sin isn't serious, but because I'm dead serious about taking seriously what God says I am. The point isn't my failure, my friends. The point isn't your failure. It's God remaking you and I into the person He originally intended us to be. That's what God's business is in yours and my life. Amen? That's what's going on in my life and your life. Every day, every moment. That's what's going on. So we have a choice. Our choice is to live in this reality, the new reality. You can make that choice. It's called walking in the Spirit. Or, or, you can hold on to the reality of your own making. You got your own reality. I will say this to you. Whatever your values are today, that is your reality. Whatever your values are today in your life, that is your reality. That's what you believe. And that's what you're believing. Now, how do we change that? Well, simply, if we're Christians and there's things in our life, and we're going to look at that in just a little bit. We're going to make some changes because we're going to live up to what God has attained for us, what Christ has done for us. We're going to live up to that because God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. The difference is how we choose to live, which version of reality we trust. Do you trust yours or do you trust God's? Do you trust your reality, the way you're living, how you live and how you function? Is that your reality? Is that what you trust? Or do you trust the living God? It's one of those two you trust. And whatever one you trust is your values and how you're living today. And I want to make this practical, something we can take home with us. When we choose to live in light of who God says we are, we are living as God made us to live. I'll say that again. When we choose to live in light of who God says I am and you are, we are living as God made us to live. We are in harmony with God. This is life of heaven. This is life of heaven. We have a picture of heaven somewhere out there in the far beyonders and floating around on clouds. And, and, and certainly there's that, but there's a lot more to that than heaven. But this is it. This is it, my friends. Now, you've got a body that you carry around with you that can sin. But within you, is the power to live the life of heaven. Amen. It, it, within your being, the Son of God, the Spirit of Christ lives in you, and you have the capacity now to live the life of heaven. Amen? We do. We have that. It's there. It's there. We live in harmony, and we live the life of heaven here and now, getting ready for that time when we'll all be together again. The life of heaven becomes more and more present in our lives. And by doing so, we bring light into the world. But there's another reality. You can choose to live out of sync with God. You have a free will. You don't have to live by... Even as a Christian, you don't have to live the way God wants you to live. You're living on slippery waters. And I think you're really throwing away a whole lot of good stuff because there's a final day coming and the book's going to get open. Amen? About the works. There's another reality you can choose. You could live out of sync with God, how God created you to live. And I describe that as hell. Hell is a place. Hell is a way. It's also a realm absent how God desires things to be. Hell is a reality. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, a realm of absence. It's the absence of God. Hell is the absence of God. It's of how God desires things to be. So, here's what we can do. As believers in Jesus Christ, we can either bring heaven to earth or we bring hell to earth. One or the other. Amen? One or the other. Now, let's make it more personal. We either bring heaven into our home or we bring hell into our home.
We're going to look at that in just a little bit. We either bring heaven into our relationships, one with another, husbands and wives, family, or we bring hell into our relationships. Husbands and wives, family, we bring hell into it. And you know what? We could bring heaven into the church or we could bring hell into the church. The church isn't this building. It's ecclesia. It's the living organism. We can worship out in the woods. I'm glad we're here. It's air conditioned. It's nice. But that's not the church. Amen? It's not the church. The church is the people. Christ is the head. You either bring heaven into that living organism, or you can bring hell into that living organism. For Jesus, heaven and hell were present realities. They're ways of living. And we can enter it, enter into it here and now. Ephesians 4, 22 and 24 says this. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Now listen now. Listen to what he says. And be made new in the attitudes of your mind and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. There's your choice, isn't it? As a believer. You have a choice. Now if I know who I am, and I know who I am in Christ, and I know my identity, and I face a situation, and I face them every day like you do, I have a decision to make. Just like you do. Either I take the old self, which may, most of the time, is selfish, self-seeking, self-centered, self-conceited, or I know who I am and I say, that's who I used to be. That's not who I am anymore. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I am going to love. I'm going to give joy. And I'm going to let the fruit of the Spirit come from my life. I may not always get the big side of the stick. I don't need it. I got Christ. Amen? I don't need to have the pot. I got the pot. Amen? I'm not playing for the pot here. I got the pot. I got Christ. I don't need anything else. I got Jesus Christ. You can throw anything you want at me. And it does, and you do too. Life comes at you from a whole lot of different ways that you never thought it was coming. Amen? You either say, I am or I'm not. Either I am in Christ or I'm not in Christ. If I'm in Christ, well, how do I respond to that? I respond the way God wants me to respond. How do I respond to that? And so I respond out of who I truly am, because I have to know who I am. I'm not protecting any turf, any territory. I don't own it. I don't want it. I don't need it. I got Christ. Amen? Hey, give up your territory. Give up all your what you got to have. Give it up. Give it up. Give it to God. Put it out there and just give it to God. I don't need to protect everything. I don't need to be so this and that. And that. Just give it up. And let Jesus Christ be Lord. Amen? Let Him be Lord. Hey, when you fall on your face and say, Lord, I failed miserably. Thank you for your forgiveness. I want to get up and get on my way because I want to reach up to what God you've attained for me. Amen? Don't play in the sandbox, man, when you can be playing in the stars. Jesus came to give you life. Not just to get you to heaven. You're going to heaven. It's life that he came to give you. Amen? Life. 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 And it's your identity. It's who you are. Young people, you got it tough. You go to school, you got peer pressure in high school and those things, and man is coming at you and you trying to be accepted, be one of the gang, be this, be that. That's okay. That's nothing wrong with you. Wanting to be part of everything and play a sport. That's good. But I'm going to tell you something. When push came to shove, you're a child of God. Amen? You're a child of God. Make decisions like you're a child of God. You're going to make them. You're old enough to make them for yourself. You make them. And what those decisions are, you'll, you'll then see in a later day. They'll all reap themselves. So, in, their, in your bulletin, you have 
an insert in your bulletin. Would you open it up, please, for a moment? It's a yellow page, I believe. It's this color. No, that's a salmon page. It's a salmon page. I'm going to ask you to take just about four, three, four minutes. And I'm, I have put in here, on the left side is put off, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires. I put in here, bringing hell to earth. On the right side is bringing heaven to earth. And I would ask you before God, let the Holy Spirit look into your heart and let him just, you know, I'll tell you what, the Holy Spirit's a speed reader. Amen. It doesn't really take him long to get a, hold of your, get a hold of your heart. I guarantee you. It won't take weeks. This isn't going to take weeks. God works quick. Amen. Let God speak to your heart just for a few moments. And you look on here and you see what you're bringing. Are you bringing hell into your home? Or are you bringing heaven into your home? Are you bringing hell into your relationships? Or are you bringing heaven into your relationships? What are you bringing? How is life for you today? Where is it? Where is it at today for you in those things? And go down the left side and you'll, I put on the right side the answer to the left side, the opposite of what it is if you're doing that in your life. So just take a few moments and ask God to speak to your heart and I'll wait patiently. Like you, I have lived on the left side of this page and all of us have lived over the left side of this page at one time or another. You may be living there this morning. You may be here this morning. I've carried bitterness in my heart. The only one that was killing was me. I've asked God to forgive me of that and I don't have any bitterness in my heart. I have pride in my heart and it almost financially bankrupt us because I was too proud. And so God in his wisdom took everything we had away from us. I've been selfish, not happy, discontent with the way life is. Having food and raiment, God says, let us there with be content. Amen? Selfish, covetous, the root of all sin is covetousness. Wanting what the other person has. Not satisfied with what you got. Jealousy. Losing my temper. That was the first thing I asked Christ to take me when I got saved that night. I had a bad temper. I soon hit you as look at you. And that God took it from me. I lied as a child. My mother was more worried about that than anything else. I lied all the time. Used the Lord's name in vain on a regular basis before I knew Christ. That was the first thing I asked Christ to take from me at the altar when I was saved. May I never ever use your name, Jesus, in vain again. Because a damned God can use his name in vain on a regular basis. I worry. And yes, there was a time when I came in my life that I didn't, after I was a Christian, I'd even wondered if the whole thing was real. And I went back and asked God to start all over again. I spent three years all over again going through that Bible. Not that I doubted, no big deal to God, but God was there for me. So I've been on this, I'm on this left side. I'm over here, guys. And I've been, I've been in revival ministry for seven years. Eight years I was solid. Every year of revival, every day. I'm not talking evangelism, I'm talking pure revival. So I worked in a lot of prayer rooms with a lot of pastors across this country. And there's nobody fooling anybody here, okay? We're not fooling each other, okay? Here's the key that I found in, in the ministry of revival. When God's people get right, great things happen. Great things happen. Um, things you can't imagine will happen when God's people get right with their God. Amen. They do. They just do. So, each is an individual. Each is unto their own God, but to God himself. The other side is to bring heaven into those relationships, into your home, into places of where you go, your work, your school. You can bring that as well. You bring one or the other. Either bring hell or you bring heaven into wherever you are. So, take that home with you. You ask you know, the Lord to speak to your heart and go from there. Jesus delivered you from the power of darkness and brought you into the kingdom of his dear son. He made you a new creation. He gave you a new identity. And he wants you to bring heaven, not hell, to earth. 
And this has been God's intention from the very beginning. Think about it. From the garden, he came to man. In the tabernacle, he had him build him a tent so he could, stay, so he could be with them. He had Solomon build him a temple so he could be there permanently. He then came to live in us. The whole movement of the Bible is of God who wants to be here with his people. It is. Right from the very get-go, right from Genesis. It, he wants to be here with his people. So the question you and I as believers is, is what are we doing with our life in relation to that? What values are you embracing? God's or your own? And are you trusting God for your identity or are you still trying to create an identity of your own? What identity are you searching for? What do you think is going to change your life? What identity do you want? Making money? Being successful? Being this big? What is it? What do you think it's going to do? It won't change anything. So, let us live up to what we have already attained. Let's pray. Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Niagara Frontier Bible Church. And I hope you enjoyed today's sermon. But in closing, let me ask you one final question. If you were to die today, are you sure that you go to heaven and not hell? Well, before you answer that, let me share one final thing with you. The Bible says that God is holy and that we are not. The Bible says that all of us, including myself, have fallen short of the glory of God and that the wages of our sin is death. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We deserve to go to hell. And since we have a problem, we don't want to admit this. God, out of love, sent us something called the Ten Commandments, His law, to show us that there's no way in the world that we could ever make it to heaven on our own. Let's take a look at a couple of them. The Bible says that you shall not lie, ever, not once in your life. How many guys have ever told a lie? Raise your hand. Well, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, you just proved my point. That would make you and I a liar before God. The Bible says you shall not steal. And if we're all honest with ourselves, we've taken something, even once, in our lives without permission. That makes us a thief. The Bible says you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. And now the Lord's name has become a cuss word. We've broken that. The Bible says that makes us a blasphemer. The Bible says you shall not commit adultery. If you think you're going to get to heaven on your own, you shall never do that. But hey, you might think, well, that's a piece of cake. I've never done that one. Really? Jesus said, if you look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. One more. The Bible says you shall not murder. And you might say, hey, no problem that one. I've never done that. Really? Jesus said, if you hate somebody in your heart, it's the same as murder in his eyes. Folks, that's just five out of ten commandments. How are you doing? You're going to tell me that you're going to stand before God and you really think he's going to let you into heaven and he's going to ask you, hey, who are you? And you say, hey, God, let me in. By your own admission, I'm a lying, thief, blasphemer, adulterer, murderer. Let me in. Folks, God's not going to let you in. We don't deserve to go to heaven, folks. We have broken God's law. We deserve to die and go straight to hell. Here's the good news. God doesn't want you to go to hell. So he's pardoned you for your crimes. He wants to get you off a death row. And just like in real life, a person can't get off a death row if they receive the governor's pardon. But just like in real life, a governor could write the pardon, even though the person is guilty of their crime. He could write the pardon and say, you don't have to go to the death penalty. But if they don't receive that pardon from the governor, they will still go to the death penalty. Folks, that's what God has done every day to everyone all over the world. Jesus Christ took the death penalty in our place. And every day that a person is alive, God is reaching out to them, asking them, pleading with them, please receive my pardon for your crime. Please don't go through with the death penalty. Hey, if you're here today and you want to make sure that you're going to heaven, you need to receive God's pardon for your crime through Jesus Christ. If that's you today, then maybe you can pray something like this. Dear Jesus, I know that I've broken your law. I am a sinner. I agree that you are holy and that I am not. And I'll never make it to heaven on my own. Please forgive me, Jesus, of all my sins. I believe that you died for me on the cross and rose again from the grave to pay the price for all my sins. I turn from my sins today and I turn to you 
I trust in you, Jesus, and in you alone to take me to heaven. Make me into the person you want me to be. I surrender this life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, folks, if you really prayed that prayer, and you meant it from your heart, I want to be the first one to congratulate you. Welcome to God's Forever Family. But that's just the beginning. When a person first gets saved, which is just what happened to you, the Bible likens you as a baby. And a baby needs food, they need nutrients, they need somebody to care. And that's why something important you need to do now is to find a good, healthy church in your area who can help provide that nourishment for you. Unfortunately, not all churches are very good churches, so if you have some questions, then please contact us, and we'd be glad to help you out. You need to get a Bible. You need to read the Word of God. And that's where you're going to find out about God and His wonderful plan and the reason and what He has planned and, and saved you for. You need to find it out in there as well. You need to pray to God. He's with you now wherever you go as His child. And prayer is not something mystical or magical. It's just simply having a conversation with God wherever you go. And finally, you need to tell somebody else about your new relationship with God and how that they can know for sure today how they can go to heaven instead of hell through God's pardon through Jesus Christ. Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Niagara Frontier Bible Church. If there's anything we can do to help you, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our information, our contact information will be coming up on the screen here shortly, and we'd love to hear from you. Remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Niagara Frontier Bible Church. If you'd like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 5287 Bronson Drive, Lewiston, New York, 14092, or you can give us a call at 716-297-8783, or for email, office at niagarafrontierbible.com, or you can visit our website at www.niagarafrontierbible.com.